change. In fact, if you look at particularly traditional institutions, when people assume the throne, uh, they sometimes give themselves a name, uh, which I think is sometimes supposed to give an indication of the kinds of uh, changes or the direction of you know, their reign and all of that. Uh, but we also know that uh, when people are also in slavery, and uh, sometimes the slave masters give names in, uh, to those individuals that are slaves. And this is actually what happened with this account in Daniel chapter 1, verse 6. Um, now, from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So then the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Dan Daniel the name Belteshazzar to Ananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. So, you know, slave masters sometimes do this uh, they, to make sure, I mean, to put a stamp of ownership. And of course, part of it is also to make the slaves forget their origin so that they do not have any kind of emotional connection to where they are coming from. In this instance, you know, a lot of these names from, you know, commentators, this looks like it's, you know, uh, it's very spiritual in the sense that, you know, it's related to the gods that were being served in Babylon at the time. So basically trying to, you know, win them away from the living God to those idols that were being worshipped in Babylon. But I found it very interesting that uh, in the case of Daniel, uh, the name of the chapter didn't actually stick. Because even the chapter itself is named after Daniel. And every time we talk about, you know, this particular individual, we mention Daniel, not the chapter. Or like his colleagues, you know, uh, their names seem to have stuck. And even if you look at even in contemporary time, you see that parents, you know, uh, still give, you know, these uh, names to their children. Maybe sometimes not even aware of the original meaning of those names. You know, um, you know but I know that there's also been a lot of you know, movement towards uh, people discarding their names. You know, and this is actually the elephant in the room because you, we know that, particularly for some surnames. You know, it's the trend is also very close to what it is that we've seen with the renaming of you know these Hebrew individuals. A lot of the same names actually reflect deities, particularly in Africa. And I know of a particular friend that you know, actually sought to an affidavit, uh, changing his surname because, as he put it, it was inimical to his destiny because he had come to realize that the surname was actually after a deity. And some people have actually changed their names. Uh, some have kept those names, uh, and I think it depends on one's level of conviction. There are people that have kept the names and they've gone on to thrive and to prosper and to still be good Christians, uh, faithful to the Lord. But if you also feel very strongly that you need to change the name, then you need to. I mean, if you look at it, this particular instance, even though the names of these other Hebrew individuals were changed, it didn't stop them from, you know, still uh, making exploits. Even though the scripture is referring to them in those names that were actually a reflection of the idols in Babylon. So whatever it is, God's power is still paramount. 